Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at optimizing the dock. So the dock is here at the bottom of the screen and it's basically a list of apps, folders, and other items. A lot of people don't pay much attention to it but this is something you use all the time. It's the primary way that people launch different apps and you can also use it for other things constantly throughout the day when working with your Mac. So it's worth it to take some time to optimize it and customize it to fit your needs. For instance, does it contain the apps that you use most often? So it will come with a bunch of default apps and sometimes when you install certain things they appear down here in the dock. But if you find yourself using apps that aren't down here all the time you may want to add them. A lot of different ways to add them. So for instance let's go and create a new finder window here and go to the applications folder. And you can just find an application that you use all the time and you can just drag it down into the dock. So for instance let's select this one here, drag it into the dock and you can put it anywhere you want. And then once it's there it will appear there whether or not that app is running. In this case it's not. You can also drag an app back and forth so you can put it where you need to. and You can group things together. For instance you may want to group mail and contacts together. Uh, maybe put calendars there too. Maybe group uh, different media playing apps together. Kind of get them in a way where you remember where the different apps are based on kind of their position in the dock. And if you want to get rid of something in the dock, maybe you look at some, something and say I don't use this very often, you can simply drag it up and you have to drag it out far enough and you see the little cloud up here when you remove it. So that's how to get applications in and how to get them out of the dock and move them around. Now when you're running an app that's not in the dock it will appear in the dock anyway. and It will appear all the way over here to the right, to the right of the rightmost app that you have in the dock. And when you quit it it will disappear. Now we find this happening a lot like an app that you use all the time appears and then you have to run it some other way uh, when it's gone. You may want to actually add it to the dock simply by dragging it from the right position here and over to the left. Place it anywhere you want. Now when you quit the app it will remain there. The icon will remain there in the dock even though it's not currently running. So that's something to do kind of on a day to day basis. See which apps keep appearing here to the right because you use them and drag them over to the left so you can launch them easily. Now you've got things on the right side of the dock. You see there's a little line here and this divides everything. And on the right side of the dock you've got several different items which could be either folders or files. They're not applications. Now folders can be represented many different ways. For instance I have my documents folder here. Uh, you can drag that in just as I dragged in applications and I can drag it out just as I would drag out an application. But they have to be done on the right side of the dock not the left side. When I click on them I can actually see what's inside one of many different ways. So in this way it's going to create a grid of the contents which include files and folders. Now if I were to secondary click, say control click on it I get to choose how the content is views. I, I can do it automatically. I can do grid which is what we saw. I can also choose list. List will make it appear like this. And actually then I could dig down into folders like that. So that's kind of handy and allows you to dig into folders that have lots and lots of stuff in them. So I could also change it to a fan. A fan appears like this sort of springs up. So just another way of accessing a small number of things. Maybe even smaller than the grid. And then you have this little button up here at the top where you can jump quickly to the actual folder that's represented. So you can set things up different ways depending upon what the contents of that folder are. And you can add folders to this and remove folders as you need. Now notice how this documents folder appears as a folder but the downloads folder appears as a little stack of files with one file icon there on the top. That's because in here I set display as a stack which show it as a stack of icons. If I change it to folder it would appear as a folder. So that's how you go back and forth between that. You can also sort items in here when they're uh, listed in a grid or a list or a fan by various ways in this uh, menu. And you can choose some other options here uh, like just quickly going to the finder, removing it from the dock without having to drag it. And you can always go open just to open that folder itself. 
And likewise you can move these around as well to reposition them to get them to be exactly where you want. So you can some people have none of these things in here. Some people have a lot. Uh, so you've got uh, the trash can of course is always going to be on the right and the finder is always going to be on the left. And note you've got some special functions here in the finder. When I click on the finder it launches it, brings it up. Uh, when I control click on it I have some things here I don't see in other ones like for instance I connected to a server or a uh, going to a folder. Uh, I also have a list of currently open windows. Even if they're hidden, notice I have a, a finder window hidden over here. It's when I've minimized a finder window it will jump down to the dock and I can then click on it to bring it back up. This is the folder I'm currently working with right here and you can see where it goes. You also may want to optimize your dock preferences. Go to the Apple menu, go to dock. It's one of the quickest ways to do that. You can turn off hiding for instance so the dock is always present. That's handy uh, for most people. For some people that use large media programs like say Photoshop and things that take up the entire screen sometimes you want that screen real estate back. You can also move the dock somewhere else if you don't want it at the bottom of the screen. Some people like it on the left for instance or on the right. So you have that ability. And you have some further preferences when you go into dock preferences here. Uh, it will go into system preferences for the dock and give you some other options like for instance uh, the size of the dock, uh, the magnification that happens when you roll over. A lot of people like to turn that off now. Uh, whether or not the genie effect happens when you put something into the dock or not. And a a uh, few other different things that you can play around with to get the dock working the best way for you. Also notice that in the dock when something is running it has a little light underneath it. So for instance Safari is running but it's been minimized. I can click on it to bring it back up. Uh, if I minimize both windows, I have two windows open, uh, they will go to the right side here and I can bring them back out. If I do uh, Safari and then hide Safari, Command H, uh, then it's not on the right side. But you can still see Safari is running. And the interesting thing is, is when I control click on it I can see the windows that are open. So here are the two different Safari windows open and I can actually jump to one if I want to. So that will happen with all sorts of other applications as well like for instance in Pages if you have multiple documents open you can control click or uh, two finger click on a trackpad or right click on a mouse to uh, access the list of windows or even do some new things like for instance in Safari I can create a new window right from the dock. So I hope you found this look at the dock useful. It's definitely worth the time to go in, put the apps that you use all the time in the dock, maybe remove some that you rarely use. You can always get to them other ways. And to also maybe put some folders or remove some folders from the right side and set them up the way that you want to view them. And optimize the entire thing so you can get your work done faster. Until next time this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the Videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.